Hello there everyone and welcome back to Kitty Play Song and Rampa. And this is I believe episode 12. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's episode 12. Um if not, I apologize. Just uh, things have been going haywire lately and I did say that I would promise to keep doing episodes again. So I'm hoping that tonight I'm able to get this recorded smoothly with little interruptions, but you know, usually I cut out interruptions and everything so that it's not too long or that each episode isn't too long. So that's why there's some cuts in episodes in case, you know, interruptions and stuff. So yeah, anyways, now we have to investigate Chihiro's body, the poor thing. So, hmm. for now, pay attention to the wall. Well, fine, Togami. I see where your brain is. Huh? <laughs> I said it once already. There's a word written there. On the wall? Can't we just... Yeah, whatever. He's more... Like, he thinks the wall's more important. But that's Togami for you. The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. So... I don't think it's any kind of dying message. It's just too... strange. <laughs> but you know, that thing about writing bloodlust in blood, doesn't it sound kind of familiar? <laughs> a murderous fiend who kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. And at the scene of each crime, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly, then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? What? What? Genocide Jack! Genocide Jack, the murderous fiend whose grisly attacks were famous all across the country. The ultimate murderous fiend, creating a reputation of abnormal, downright cruel killings. What is this? Then this is... Some copycat killer trying to imitate Genocide Jack's style? But why would anyone do that? Hmm. Perhaps it's the work of the real Genocide Jack. <gasps> the real? Wait, are you saying Genocide Jack is here in the school? No way! <laughs> There's no way. Hmm. But going so far as to write bloodlust at the scene, I am surprised at their stupidity. Well... I can't imagine a worse situation than dealing with a stupid murderer. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. <laughs> what is it now? Toko! Hina was pointing toward the entrance to the girls' locker room. Ah! Uh, uh. Toko was the last to arrive, and now she was just standing there. Dots? Question mark? Uh oh. No! Why? 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 <laughs> Why? Dud. <laughs> she fainted. That did not sound good. T Toko. Hina rushed over to the collapsed Toko and started trying to shake her awake. <gasps> Toko, are you okay? Come on, wake up. Oh. Oh, that's right. I just remembered what she said about how she faints anytime she sees blood. Oh. She, so she is a hemophobic? I imagine she does not watch, watch too many horror films then. Uh, um... This isn't a violation of the rules, right? I mean, technically she passed out somewhere besides her room. No, I think it should be okay. The regulations prohibit sleeping, like, on purpose. Hmm. Ah, so she since she didn't faint on purpose, it doesn't count! Gotcha! Just a second! Toko, can you hear me? Hey, you gotta wake up! As if she'd heard her, Toko suddenly shot awake. As in, she literally jumped up from where she was laying. It was such a strange reaction, I was at a total loss for words. She leapt straight up into the air, changing her stance as she did. <laughs> in no time flat, she was just standing up and had this strange look on her face. Like, what the heck? Ignoring, her, ignoring the physical contortions she had to go through, her motions were totally haphazard. Huh? What? <laughs> Sorry about that. I was just so shocked, you know? It happens, right? Was I the only one? T Toko, are you okay? You're looking kind of strange, and you sound strange, too. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine! <laughs> Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? 
ha ha! What the heck? She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. <laughs> the world has a front and a back, a top inning and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. <laughs> wow. This is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. And I mean completely different. No, no, no. Everything's fine. At least the stutter's all gone. And that's a good thing, right? Yeah. I see. It's clear to me that everything is not fine. Your eyes seem strangely vacant. Mm. It must be best if we take her back to her room for the time being. So, um... I don't mind taking her, but could someone help me? I, I, I'm creeped out by her right now. Mm-hmm. If you need help, I don't mind. Um... Taka, could you help me? <laughs> Denied. Ha! <laughs> huh? She totally ignored me. Hmm. Very well. You take care of the girl, and the rest of us can begin the investigation right away. Can I assume nobody has a problem leaving Sakura and Mondo on guard duty again? H hold on a second. Rushing to an investigation? Hmm. The mastermind isn't behind that. After what happened last time, surely you realize that. Nigga. Don't make me repeat myself. There, there is no question that Chihiro was murdered by someone among us. Hmm. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Of course. Right as rain. But don't take it as a bad thing. It's just a fact of life. Because... Yeah. That's how graduation works. Then it's happened again? Is that what you're saying? That another one of us... Another one of us killed a fellow classmate? Hmm? What? Does that freak you out? You guys got no balls, you know that? <laughs> Is there just nothing down there at all? Well, I'll let you put it to mine if you want. <laughs> N no, Monokuma, please no. Actually, I don't have any either, sorry! Stop talking. Stop monologuing and give us what you came here to give us. You did bring it, right? Hee <laughs> <laughs> hee hee, I sure did, chum. It's the Monokuma file! Allow me to present the next Monokuma file. I know how much you must be looking forward to it. See ya later! So please do your very tippy top best on this investigation, because I look forward to the trial. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> No way! Do we really gotta do another investigation? Examining the corpse of one of our friends? Having to suspect all our other friends? Why? I hate this. I can't take it anymore. Oh no! I hate it too! Help me! I I've, I've had enough. I'm getting out of here. Hey! Where do you plan on going? There's nowhere to run. Such ignorance. Just accept it already. After all, blood is just a liquid. A dead body is a simple object. Shut up, Togami. <laughs> you are very enthusiastic about all this, are you not? Naturally. How can I not be? If we don't unmask the culprit, we all die. That that's true, but to jump into it so soon... What? What? Do you want to die? Such ignorance. Fine, then go off and die somewhere. Right now, go ahead. You're a waste of space. If anyone's a waste of space, Togami, it's your face. Because I mean, seriously. Just, yeah. Anyway. D damn a you! A dead body is an object? Piece of shit! Chihiro wasn't an object. Show a little respect or I'll beat some India. Calm down. I mean, I would I would just let Mondo have his way with Togami and, and really actually beat the crap out of him because I think I think Togami deserves it, so that's just me though. But Togami definitely deserves a slap in the face, so everyone stop bickering. Listen, there's some truth in what Biaki has said. I hate to admit it, but there really is. K Kyoko! Because if we don't solve the mystery and find the killer, our own lives are forfeit. And if Byakuya is right it, that Genocide Jack is somehow the one who killed Chihiro... That's right. Then unless we do something, more victims could start piling up. What? Forget more victims! If we mess this up, we're all dead meat! Hey! Hey! Hold on, hold on! If that's your worry, you don't gotta worry any longer! Any In any one killing game, the guilty party may only kill a maximum of two people! <laughs> 
What? I don't remember any rule like that. Actually... I just came up with it. I mean, if one person went around and killed everyone, your lovely student life would be all over, right? And my life would be all boring because everyone would be dead. The new rule has been added to the regulations menu, thanks, Monokuma. So then... In that case, why not limit it to one person? Hey, um... Well, in a good mystery, you don't want to miss out on at least the potential of a serial killer angle. <laughs> Just one would totally murder that possibility. Punishment is waiting for you. No pun intended, by the way. <clears throat> Very well for now. I'll catch you guys at the class trial. <laughs> I can't say I understand his thinking, but if we can kill up to two people, then one more person's life could still be in danger. <laughs> which is definitely not good. We need to uncover the culprit before something else happens. You son of a bitch! You need to shut the F up! So, um... Oh, well, for now, Taka and me are gonna drop Toko off in her room. <laughs> nice! I'm gonna get dropped off. There is nothing to be done. We have no time to stand around here. We must begin our investigation to tweet. If we do not solve the mystery of who killed Chihiro, Is that okay? then we will quickly follow her into the afterlife. That's true. I hate this, but if I want to survive, me and everyone else, we have to do it. We don't have any other choice. <coughs> first off all, first of... First off all, well, okay. First of all, I better check the Monokuma file to see exactly what's going on. The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death is estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor of the school. The cause of death was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. That's all it says. Well, it's not like there's any point in complaining about it. No matter what, I gotta do what I gotta do. Okay. <laughs> Hey Makoto, do you have a second? Huh? Did you need something from me? Naturally. Of course. Life without purpose is quite dull, you know? Um, so what did you need? <laughs> I'm going to let you cooperate with me during my investigation. Aren't I nice, Makoto? Huh? What? I'm purchasing your talent. The same talent which allowed you to solve Sayaka's case. It solved? No, I just... Stop talking. You seem to have some limited use, which is why I've chosen you. You have the honor of contributing to my investigation. So, you're inviting me to come with you? You're doing it in the most arrogant way possible, though. Let's go. Now then, shall we get started? B but... We need to get moving. There's no time to be standing around. I don't really know what just happened, but it looks like I'll be working with Biaki on this one. Which is not what I intended. I could feel the life draining out of my own body. It's a dead body. Shihiro's dead body. Very strange. But the more I look, the more strange it all seems. This must be Genocide Jack's handiwork. Well, but... What? But we're still not sure he did it. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> I wonder about that. <laughs> I just don't know. The word bloodlust is written on the wall in blood. What's the meaning behind it? Bloodlust. There's a dumbbell on the floor and... This is a blood stain. There's a blood stain on the dumbbell. Wow, Makoto likes to point out the obvious. Hmm. The Monokuma file said a blow to the head with a blunt object is what killed her. Does that mean this dumbbell was actually the murder weapon? That's right. I don't imagine it could have been anything else. There's a fresh blood stain on the carpet. It must have been splattered with blood during the murder. And there's blood here, too. The poster's got some blood on it. It must have happened during the murder. I use this locker room all the time. Now, it's become the site of Chihiro's death. But, why was she killed in the locker room? Actually, if you think about it, she could have been killed somewhere else than carried here. She was very light, that is true. It wouldn't be hard for someone to carry her, but still. I still think she came here on her own by choice. What makes you say that? 
she's been talking a lot lately about how she wanted to get stronger. So you're saying she came here to exercise? But according to the Monokuma file, apparently she was killed around 2 in the morning. Would she really have been exercising that late? Perhaps. Hina or myself are usually in the locker room during the day, so she's probably avoiding it then. Avoiding it? Mm. Although we invited her to join us more than once, she never showed up. So I can only assume she was trying to avoid us. And instead, she came to exercise in the middle of the night? However... Perhaps, but it's difficult for me to imagine she would have come alone. She did want to start exercising, but she specifically mentioned she couldn't do it by herself. She needed support from others. So you're saying she could have come here in the middle of the night training to train in secret, but that she also would have come with someone else. Hmm. It's a possibility, I think. Well. Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Jihiro talk about it, right? All I need to get stronger. Yeah, I do remember she said that more than once. Yeah. Sure did, which I guess explains the trip down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl. After all, most girls aren't that strong. According to you, Mondo. Yeah. I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about that stuff. The cause of Chihiro's complex. I can't help wondering what it might be. Now I believe it's about time for us to move on. Huh? Already? What? New clues won't magically appear by standing around here. We need to check every aspect of this case. That's true, but... Let's go. If you're satisfied, let's hurry up and proceed. <sighs> He's so pushy. I got caught up with the wrong person this time. Well, at least he realizes it. Aha! <laughs> but who wouldn't? <laughs> so, this is our next location. Do you have to be the boss of everything, Biakia? Like, good lord. Huh? This place is related to the investigation? <laughs> Figure it out for yourself. It's no fun if you don't, right? <sighs> That's not even the scene of the crime, idiot. Well, okay, fine. Oh, sorry. I guess I gotta investigate out here. If I remember right, this card reader is meant to work with our handbooks, right? What? Do you have an issue with it? If so, you should take it up with Monokuma. He said that, then quickly and sharply clapped his hands together. Did you call for me? <laughs> wow. You called for me? <laughs> Has he been do- <laughs> Has he been domesticated? That's, That's too right. funny. It seems that Makoto has a question for you. You need something? Sure, sure, what's up? Um, well, it's just about this card reader. Yep. Yes, the card readers have all been designed to interface with each of your handbooks. You can only enter the locker room corresponding to the gender listed in your individual handbook. <laughs> and it's impossible for two people in a row to go through while the door is unlocked, correct? Unbelievable. If there were some sort of erotic terrorist on the prowl, the ceiling mounted Gatling gun would initiate a Swiss cheese slaughter. <laughs> and the school regulations prohibit anyone from leading from lending someone else their handbook, correct? Of course! Correctly correct! So then, that means only girls can go in the girls' locker room and only boys can go in the boys' locker room. In other words, Chihiro's body being found in the girls' locker room means <laughs> Hey Makoto, I can see right through you. See right through me? That's scary, Biakia. Please don't do that. <laughs> Allow me to tell you what you're thinking. Since Chihiro was found in the girls' locker room, the killer must have been able to get in there. So in other words... As such, the killer must be one of the girls. Did I get it right? Such ignorance. <sighs> Good lord, you're simple. But am I wrong? <laughs> you should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Len loaning your e-handbook to another student is strictly prohibited. Only the act of loaning a handbook is prohibited. Borrowing someone else's is perfectly fine. <laughs> I would expect nothing less from the prodigal son of the noble Togami family. So you managed to sniff out the loophole in the regulations. <laughs> Knowing you, I would bet you created it on purpose, didn't you? To add a little more excitement to things. <laughs> you're 
treating me like a puny little appetizer instead of the main course that I am. Now then, since the dead can't actually talk, they're not people anymore, they're things. Yeah. Get it? Got it? Good. Wait, hold on. You're saying that's a loophole, but... In order to borrow something from someone, then that means someone would have to loan it, so, uh... Who are you? So sleepy. Just listening to you makes me want to pass out. Be more like Byakuya and get your poop together. So we can get the poop on the robot. Just kidding. Don't poop on me. Unbelievable. Or else I'll charge you with criminal neglig negligence. Blech. No more questions. Fit out the rest for your own damn self. That's fine. Well, I know you are unfortunately lacking in mental faculties. So I'll fill you in myself. Let's head to the main hall. The main hall? Yeah, I know it's there. That'll help you understand what's going on. Carb leader, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I mean, I know what they're gonna find, so. Which will make sense. We came to the main hall. So, what are we looking for here? <sighs> You're pathetic. Does that mean I have to figure it out for myself? I mean, duh. Let's get straight to the point. There's a mailbox here. Could there be something inside? It's an e-handbook. No, wait, there's three of them. But what are they doing here? <laughs> so you finally found them. Huh? Did you know these were here, Byakia? <laughs> I happened to find them by, by chance myself the other day. It seems there's a system in place where the handbooks of dead students get delivered to this mailbox. So then, these three handbooks belong to... Junko, Leon, and Sayaka? <laughs> you can go ahead and confirm it yourself. I immediately turned on one of the handbooks, and when I did... You're right, this is Sayaka's handbook. <laughs> Now, do you understand? This is the key to the loophole that I revealed earlier. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get it. You should pay, you should pay closer attention to the regulations. The answer has been in front of you the entire time. Loading your handbook. Okay, I'm not rereading this crap. I see. Yeah, now I understand. What? Hmm? Hold on a second. What's wrong? Very strange. That's strange. One of the handbooks won't turn on. Is it broken? Whose is it? The other handbook showed Junko's name when I started it up. Then the, then the one that won't turn on must be Leon's, right? I see. It would make sense, yes. After all, he did get pummeled with dozens and dozens of baseballs. Pummeled with baseballs... The memory of it came flooding back, and then I had nightmares. That cruel punishment, which led to Leon's death. The execution that the mastermind concocted. A cruel, heartless death. You're right, it wouldn't be surprising for the handbook to break during that kind of assault. Damn it! Hey, hey! You're making me angry! Well, that's not good. Now I'm real! Okay. What? Yeah. That e handbook is essential to student life here. Crucial, integral, instrumental, a super big deal. There's no way it would break that easily. But it did. That's impossible! If I say it wouldn't break, it wouldn't freaking break. It can withstand up to 10 tons of pressure, and it's waterproof up to 100 meters, okay? I don't care how many baseballs you hit it with, it wouldn't do crap. Oh, but, uh, even my amazing handbook does have one single weak point. It does. I can't hear you! But it's a secret! I wouldn't want you to go breaking any more handbooks! What? Then Leon must have broken it somehow without realizing what its weakness was, right? Hmm. Hard to say! You know what- you know what I think? I think his handbook isn't actually broken! Well, what? But you might ask, how could that be? <laughs> Leaving the question hanging in the air, Monokuma disappeared. What just happened? Monokuma said it's not broken, but it's un an undeniable fact that it's not turning on. That's fine. Well, I don't see any connection to the case, so it doesn't matter for now. 
You think so? Either way, something about it still bothers me. <laughs> okay then, this should be enough to get things rolling. Let's begin our investigation in earnest and track down the true culprit. Yeah, we need to find out who killed Chihiro. <laughs> to be exact, not quite. Huh? Not quite? Well, whatever. <laughs> Hold on, there's still more here waiting to be checked. Are you serious? <sighs> what do you mean by that, Byakuya? To be exact, not quite. <laughs> Certainly, I want to reveal Chihiro's killer, but more precisely, I want to discover the true identity of Genocide Jack. Then, you really think... You truly believe Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro? Don't make me repeat myself. Absolutely. I have no doubt that Genocide Jack is the culprit in this case. <laughs> that murderous fiend is Genocide Jack, right? What? There is nobody else it could be. <laughs> A murderous fiend kills again and again using a bizarre and brutal method. They're like a ghost, attacking suddenly then slipping away before the police can catch up to them. And what nickname did the internet give to this mysterious serial killer? Genocide Jack. They say he's killed thousands of people, but that's gotta be an urban legend. Still, could one of us really be a demented psychotic killer like that? <laughs> You're not wrong to wonder. But words mean little right now. <laughs> I have something that will prove it, and I can show you. Oh, goody. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Don't make me repeat myself. And I have a basis to believe that. I assure you, Genocide Jack is one of us. <laughs> is there really proof? There's somewhere I'd like to take you. This will provide all the evidence you need. It's all clear now. Evidence that Genocide Jack is the one that killed Chihiro. Evidence. Does something like that really... Ah! Hey, you two! Big trouble! Need your help! I don't have time to play with you. We're busy. Leave us alone. Because, I mean... But it's an emergency! Emergency! Come on, please! You gotta help me! Okay, Hina, what's up? Please! This is a serious emergency! Please, please, you've got to help me! Just calm down, okay, Hina? Because, I mean... But, but, it's an emergency! <laughs> an emergency? What happened? Well... Something's wrong with Toko. She's acting super strange. Well, I mean, she was acting pretty strange earlier, right? What should we do, Byakuya? Very strange. Since it's Toko, I must admit I'm intrigued. I suppose we can take a second to see what's going on with her. Are you sure? Don't make me repeat myself. Well, he just said it, so I'm not going to read that. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I thought for sure he'd just say no, and that'd be the end of it. Yeah! Okay, okay, come on, hurry! Wait for us, Hina! Let's go. It looks like she headed to the dorms, to Toko's room most likely. You're right. Okay, time to check up on Toko. Such You're talking to the wrong person, you waste of- God damn it, I hate you, Byakuya. <sighs> you guys are too slow. I think you're just too fast. Hm. So, what's this emergency? So, um... Well, after what happened in the girls' locker room, we left Toko in her room so she could lay down. After a while, we came back to check on her, you know? See how she was doing, but when we did... Hmm. It was weird. She refused to come out, and she kept saying all this weird stuff. Weird stuff? That's fine. We should try talking to her ourselves. Y yeah, good idea. Okay, let's get this over with. I may as well give it a shot. The door swung open, slowly and silently. <laughs> Holy crap! An aura of negativity flowed out from behind the door, forcing a gasp out of me. What? Oh, uh, nothing. It's just that, uh, Hina was really worried about you holding yourself up in your room. Leave me alone. Um, yeah, sure thing. But, could you open up? 
just for a second? Won't allow it. Huh? <laughs> Won't let Genocide Jack have control. Well, and just like that, she slammed the door in my face. What was that? Hmm. She's been acting like that the whole time when I rang a little while ago. Oh, to drive out the killer! To drive out the murderous fiend! Um... It doesn't make any sense, right? I was afraid to leave her in there alone, so I tried to bust down her door. But it felt like something was holding it shut on the other side. I couldn't even budge it. Toko was scared enough to even bar her door? Does she think the same thing as Byakuya? I don't know why it keeps freezing like that, but whatever. Does she think the serial killer genocide Jack really murdered Chihiro? Is that why Toko's so scared? But... Whatever it is, I'm really worried about her. Isn't there anyone who might be able to persuade her? Heh <laughs> heh. I can think of one person. This dork face. Hey, Byakuya, you think you could ask her? To come out of her room, I mean. That's fine. Sure, whatever. Huh? Heh, huh? You're gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Oh, sorry, that came out weird. You're gonna talk to her, Byakuya? Wow, I guess you can be nice when you want to. Which is, like, hardly ever. Byakuya stood in front of her door, not making a sound and pressed the doorbell. After a few moments... What do you want? Leave me alone. You're all s s s so annoying. Uh, uh, back away! <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. It's Yakuya. <laughs> He's like, why'd you get my name wrong? <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't k keep our promise. <laughs> but don't worry. Never again. <laughs> I, I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. And with that, the door slammed shut. Hmm. Even Byakuya couldn't pull it off. <laughs> There's nothing else we can do. Let's get back to the investigation. <laughs> Hold on! Hey, Byakuya, what was Toko talking about just now? Something about a promise? What? Hmm? Oh, I have no idea. Another one of her delusions, I'm sure. But, but... Stop talking. If I say I don't know, that means I don't know. Just let Hina take care of her. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, okay. I'll stay here and keep an eye on her. Let's go. Well then, let's go. Without waiting for a reply, Byakuya sped away. But Byakuya! And I hurried to catch up. I tried to talk to him several times as we walked. But he didn't even look back, let alone say anything. He just kept on walking towards his destination. Finally, <clears throat> his feet brought him to a stop in front of a certain room. The library? <laughs> Come on, let's go in. Well... Um, is the evidence that proves it was Genocide Jack really in the library? Don't make me repeat myself. Don't make me say it again. <sighs> If I remember, on the other side of this door, it's the archive, right? <laughs> Hurry up and go inside. Oh, here? Let's go. It'll all make sense once you're inside. Whoa, there's so many books and files. And so much dust, too. So, in other words... I would say there's enough value in this place to endure the dust. Well, I would imagine so. There's so many files stuffed onto the shelf. What's in all these things? That's enough. Those documents are dangerous. Dangerous? They detail all the people who control the world from behind the scenes. Dangerous truth for a commoner. You mean like, members of the diet or something? No, I mean the ones with real power. The secret council controlling everything from the shadows. If you're ready to be disappeared for it, take a look. There are some very interesting people in there. 
Y you're just kidding, right? <laughs> Am I? I I'll just let it go for now. There's a ton of thick files stuffed onto the bookshelf. <laughs> if you're thinking of looking through any of them, let me give you a little warning. Those things are filled with graphic disturbing photos from all kinds of crime scenes. It's the kind of thing any normal person wouldn't ever want to look at. Be careful. Huh? What do you mean? All those files there are investigation reports related to different cold cases. Those are internal documents for, documents for police eyes only. They're not the kind of thing you'd expect to leak. Oh? Well then. There's a wooden box. It's empty. Although, judging by the smudges in the dust, it looks like there was something inside. I wonder what it was. Hmm. There, was an, <coughs> there was an extension cord plugged in there. It proved very useful I well, it, 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 Sorry, I cannot read tonight. It proved very useful while I was in the library. An extension cord, huh? Oh, I thought I clicked Biakia, but I did not. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. Hmm. If you pay attention to your surroundings, you're sure to discover that value for yourself. Oh, okay. I thought I looked at almost everything. Guess not. The shelf is stuffed tight with vials. Without really thinking about it, I picked one at random. Hmm. Uh, you have a sharp IND to select that file. Huh? That's right. That's the report on a presidential assassination. The original is kept at the National Library. It wouldn't be declassified for another 30 years. Are you sure you want to look at it now? <laughs> There's no telling whose crosshairs you might wind up in for peeking at it. Ugh, without making a sound, I return the file to the shelf. Uh, let's see here. Well, I'm trying to, okay, I'm trying to click on stuff, but I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, you know what? Okay, there's the light down here. That's right. That's the report. Oh. I thought I clicked the um, lamp, but I guess not. Okay. All right. So there we go. Huh? It's a desk lamp. Oh yeah, it's the same one I saw Biaki using in the library before. What? Do you have a problem with that lamp? It was here before, then I moved it over there. It's too dark over there, so I thought I'd put it to good use. <laughs> so, are you finally beginning to understand the true splendor of this library? The entire reason I was interested in the library is because of this room right here. <laughs> Interesting. It's home, it's home to classified government documents, police records, things no ordinary person would ever see. Isn't it magnificent? This can't be for real, right? Such ignorance. That's your guys' problem. Anything that doesn't fit into your preconceived reality, you label it a lie. Well, it's not that. It's just, it's not like I totally refuse to believe it, but... I mean, there's just so much. How could anyone have pull, put this all together? Hmm. I suppose it goes to show just how much Hope's Peak truly wields. Or perhaps... <laughs> the mastermind may have wanted to provide us with enough entertainment to keep us from getting bored. Uh, it's no use. I can't keep up with all this. It's just too unreal. <laughs> What's wrong? You still can't believe it? What about you? How can you believe it so easily? Things like that are usually impossible. What? What do you mean, usually? Usual, normal, ordinary, simple? Those things don't exist anywhere in the real world. If you don't understand what they actually represent, you don't understand the nature of anything. You don't pull your punches, do you? <laughs> Besides, what you consider usual is based on your common sense, right? But what makes you think your own common sense applies to me at all? <laughs> the documents gathered here are genuine. I have reviewed them multiple times, there, so there is no doubt. H hold on a second. You're saying you've read all these documents and more than once? But all this has to be like top secret, confidential stuff, so why? <laughs> My family has a reading room just like this at our home. Ours is bigger, of course, and not as dusty. Huh? <laughs> Members of the Togami family have access to any variety of government-related documents. That includes foreign powers as well as domestic. 
How is that possible? So in other words... I already told you. There's a secret council that controls the world from the shadows. <laughs> My family's a member of that council. And I have within me the bloodline that will allow me to one day bend the world to my will. <laughs> but to become such a ruler, I must know all levels of this world backwards and forwards. So whenever I have time, I like to review whatever documents and materials that interest me. Which is why I can proclaim without a doubt that the materials gathered here are the real thing. This is beyond believing or not believing. Byakuya is actually starting to scare me more than the actual mastermind. Hmm. And what always interested me the most were the cold case police investigation reports. Reading through these reports has always been a hobby of mine ever since I was little. It's excellent mental exercise. I solved more than a few of those cases just by reviewing the, reviewing the reports. And among all those reports, one of my recent favorites is the Genocide Jack case. As he talked, Fiocchio grabbed a specific file from the shelf. That's right. This is the complete case file. Every single report surrounding the Genocide Jack case has been compiled in here. Hmm. Because there are so many, allow me to quickly summarize the main points. To begin, there are two notable characteristics in every Genocide Jack murder. The first characteristic is that at every crime scene, the word bloodlust is written in the victim's own blood. And the second is that when the victims are murdered, their bodies are suspended in a certain way. Bloodlust is written in blood, and the victim's body is suspended. It's exactly the same as what happened to Chihiro. <laughs> Save your surprise, the best part is yet to come. Hmm. For, the second for the second characteristic, where the victims are suspended. The only ones who knew about that particular fact were members of the police and other higher-ups. By all accounts, nobody in the media ever found out. Huh? In other words, no one on the news, no one online, nobody knew about that aspect of each crime. Only key officials and the killer himself knew about this act of mounting the victim. Hmm. Now, if you recall Chihiro's corpse, her body was most certainly mounted in this fashion. You say so. So, how could the killer have known about suspending the victim? That's right. That's the key question. But, the fa but in fact, the answer is quite simple. So in other words... The culprit isn't a copycat killer. It's the real Genocide Jack. Gah! In other words... That right there is the evidence that Genocide Jack has hidden himself among the rest of us. But then, Genocide Jack really is... Such a brutal, fiendish killer really is walking around among us? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Things are really starting to get interesting, aren't they? I never imagined a killer with such reputation would ever become part of our little game. Now, don't you think it would be good for you to take a look at what I've already seen? You might just manage to ferret out a clue or two. Such ignorance. If you get down on your knees and beg, I might even show you myself. Wow, this turd. I just don't know. Um, Byakuya, about the Genocide Jack case file. Did you let me see it? That's fine. Well, you didn't beg, but I guess it's okay this time. Wow. I just don't know. Feel free to look at it in here, but you can't take it with you. Byaki handed me the file, and I flipped through it with tense, nervous fingers. Suddenly, my hand stopped. I would reached the page where photos from the scene of each crime had all been collected. Here. The names of Genocide Jack's victims ran on for several pages. Ken Harada, 32, Tetsuhiro Honda, 17, Shoji Gaku, 23, Kano Issei, 14, Takashi Yoshida, 30. Komatsuna Taro, Takafumi Gono, Uchida Naohisa, Takashi Masamune, Yuto Yumejima. There was no end to it. Like, good lord. But one thing became perfectly clear as I read. All the killer's countless victims were killed and suspended in exactly the same way. Yeah, not how Chihiro was suspended. So, you know. And at the scene of every murder, the word bloodlust was left on the vic in the victim's own blood. Hmm. Now take a look at the next page, and you'll find another interesting tidbit. The next page... Profiling results? 
All of the crimes took place either on weekdays at night or during holidays, either day or night. The most common time for the killing to take place was on holidays in the afternoon. Based on these facts, it could be suggested that the suspect may be a student. Evidence suggests that the, su the suspect lingered at the scene, but when they did leave, they were in a panic. Because an eyewitness has never come forward, it's unlikely there was any external reason for this. This confused behavior, su this confused behavior suggests that the suspect may potentially suffer from dissociative identity disorder. So in other words... The key point here is that the culprit may well have a split personality. A split personality? Like the kind of thing you see on TV? So I'm part of another totally unbelievable story. But this one is way more unbelievable than anything else up till now. Or maybe it really isn't. I don't know. I feel like my mind has gone numb. Let's go. Alright, we should get going soon. Huh? Where are we going? <laughs> Anywhere but here. We finished our business here, haven't we? Ah, uh, wait, the Akia! He likes to call out his name a lot, you know. As usual, Biakia turned and left without another word. I hurried out of the library to catch up. <laughs> well, this is where we part ways. I have some things I need to take care of before the class trial. Huh? Just all of a sudden like that? I don't have time to play with you. <sighs> Come on, enough of your annoying misapprehensions. Did you really think we'd be together the whole time? My god, Makoto, you're so annoying. Take responsibility for yourself and do something useful. Move the investigation forward on your own. Goodbye. Well, goodbye. And just like that, he was gone. Just as quickly as he'd asked me to join him, he cut me off. In the end, I feel like I was just some plaything getting tossed around. At the same time, I'd uncovered some really important clues thanks to him. Genocide Jack, he's the one that killed Chihiro. And that murderous fiend is one of us. But who is it? I have to find that out no matter what it takes. And to do that, there's somewhere I have to go investigate one more time. I have to go back to the crime scene, the girls' locker room. I should check the boys' locker room too. And the others might have come up with some info I might find useful while I'm at it. I need to find out everything I can. Alright, so. Oh wait, duh, it's also, wait, yeah, this way. Duh, I'm stupid. Oh, hello, Hifuki. Ding, ding, ding! Hifumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if... <coughs> Hmm, another stat increase for me. Evidence, what did you find? <laughs> I cannot reveal that just yet. That's it. But I'm I guarantee sure of it. Okay, okay. But I guarantee that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? <laughs> oh yeah, Miss <laughs> Ludenberg said she witnessed something worthwhile too. Really? What did she see? Well, it would seem... She refused to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies the, the boy she likes, right? Right? No. Okay, so where is Celeste now? Hmm. The warehouse hmm. by the dorms. Hmm. Can you stop? Hmm. God, just stop that. That's so annoying. The warehouse by the dorms. She was there, but at the same time, not there. <sighs> What's it gonna be? Okay, let's check this out one more time. Hey Kyoko, have you made any progress on your investigation? Indeed. Generally speaking. However. But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation? What is it? Wow. Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But, but so then. Before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Chihiro's body one more time, thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to de determine that's whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. I guess I'll take another look at the body then. And Chihiro's handbook is missing? That's definitely worth worrying about. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. 
I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Chihiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug? Wait, so then this isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more it's not the only thing that concerns me. Chihiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head. Which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right, there's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through the genocide jack file, something's not quite right. Yeah, there's no scissors involved. What does this all mean? Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chihiro. And to figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jack case file one more time. Damn. Jihiro's presence here was especially weak. Her body and her soul. No forgiveness! To target such a helpless being, it's unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I cannot forgive this. Aww. Yeah. Oh yeah, I already... Okay, he's not gonna say, <coughs> say anything else. Yeah. Okay, uh, I guess I don't need to examine that stuff. Oh, damn, there's still more I need to check. Oh, okay. This dumbbell has to be the murder weapon. Did I? Oh, no. The bloodstained poster. The blood is the most noteworthy part, but the swimsuit model is pretty noticeable too. A girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place you find something like this. Yeah, cause you know, I mean, duh, obvious reasons. Okay. Now to the boys' locker room. Doo -doo -doo -doo. We gotta get past the Fumi first. Ah, uh -huh. just kidding. Not really. Kind of. I don't know. He just stands there in the way like, oop. Oh, look at that poster. Ah ha ha. That stands out. Huh, this poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. God, they're hot. Look at how beautiful they are. Somehow, it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. Well, in some cases, it might. Cough. Choke. Ahem. <clears throat> oh, but wait. That reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is... That's right, there's definitely something strange about this. Do one of the guys secretly want to put this in here? Maybe it was Mondo and Ortaka. They seem to have a large secret about them being gay, you know? So maybe they wanted this in here instead? Just kidding. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band with extremely good looks. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker room. But first, what is this? There's a strange stain on the carpet. And why is it brown? Ugh. Just, just kidding. What is it? Okay, I think that's probably everything in here. Okay. Okay, well, you know... You spend a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sakura? Of course. I've used it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes Hina and I use it together. Okay, then, let me ask you something. Do you think the posters in the boys' and girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never really paid any attention to the posters. I see. However... But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. 
We have protein coffee? Mm. In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain. A stain? But I don't see any stain on the carpet now. But it was in the boys' locker room! Of course. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain has disappeared. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it unusually clean? As if there was never a stain here to begin with. Exactly. Okay, well, I'm going to end this here, sadly. I mean, I would continue it, but I will get to that in the next episode, as well as the trial, or at least, like, part one of the trial. I'm probably not going to have the trial all in one episode this time, so that will be split, but, you know. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this and the other episodes of Rampa. And I hope to see you again. Take care.